So yesterday we completed the structure of prokaryotic cell. Today we will try to start with the structure of the eukaryotic cell. We are going to study about the eukaryotic. Okay. So when we are talking about the eukaryotic cell, in a eukaryotic cell, You see, there is a fluid which is filled, which we call it as cytoplasm. Okay, this is a cytoplasm. The word cytoplasm means cell fluid. So this entire cell is filled. Which you are able to see in the center, you are able to see a nucleus, a prominent nucleus. Okay, and then you are able to see lots of cell organelles, lots of membrane bound cell organelles you are able to see. Okay, so whatever is found inside this yellow dotted structure, okay, which I am trying to draw it like a line, it's Is what we call it as the protoplasm. We call this entire thing as the protoplasm. So this is the plasma membrane. <clears throat> Whatever structure that you're seeing here inside is what we call it as protoplasm. What is this protoplasm? Protoplasm is cytoplasm plus organelles. Or we can say cytoplasm with organelles plus nucleus. Okay, so this is what we call it as protoplasm. Yeah, protoplasm means the proto is living, plasm 
means fluid. So the living fluid is what we call it as protoplasm. Okay. So if you are going to ask me kind of thing in cell you have you can distinguish between two things one is plasma membrane and then you have protoplasm Okay, inside protoplasm, you can say that there is cytoplasm. And then you have a separate part which is called as nucleus. Inside cytoplasm, you have membrane bound organelles. And then you have other bodies. So inside this membrane bound organelles, you have mitochondria. Golgi body. endoplasmic reticulum chloroplast and to understand lysosomes these are all there okay and then you have other bodies okay you have one more category which is there which is non membrane bound okay they are the centrioles and the second one is ribosomes there are the other bodies you have micro bodies vacuoles granules and the fourth one is card droplets okay so if you are having plant cell along with this thing you will also have something called as a cell wall yes i am talking about
yes i am talking about uh, plant cell as well as animal cell i am talking about a eukaryotic cell in a eukaryotic cell you have differences but this is how the organization is happening so you have cell wall cell plasma membrane okay certain or some parts will be found in certain cells some parts will be missing but generally whenever we are talking about a eukaryotic cell you consider these are the organization level so you have the outer covering and the protoplasm okay whatever comes in the outer covering is not used as the not not included in the protoplasm okay plasma membrane might be living but it is not it is not part of the main fluid it is just a covering so we will not consider that as a uh, part of the protoplasm okay so plasma membrane is separated out cell wall is separated out the covering part and the main living fluid is the fluid which is what we call it as protoplasm it consists of two things one is like the nucleus because nucleus is very distinct it is not included with the other organelles and the main part which is your cytoplasm in your cytoplasm you can see three things three different classes of structures you have a non membrane bound structures you have membrane bound structures and you have other bodies so in non membrane you have centriole and ribosomes in membrane bound organelles you have mitochondria golgi body endoplasmic reticulum chloroplast lysosomes again here chloroplast is not found in animal cells but still i have included here because it is part of the eukaryotic cell structure okay again you have other bodies other bodies what are the other bodies you have micro bodies you have vacuoles you have granules you have fat droplets all these things are considered to be other bodies so this is how the organization is happening children i think you need to be aware every week there is going to be a need je test okay so for every week you are going to have a test which means uh, you have to like kind of like look into learnity every now and then so there are some people who have missed last week's test so every sunday there is going to be a test so it will be open only from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock so within that time you have to spend 3 hours to take it so you decide which time you want to take and then like you take it portion and all you have to refer to learnity it will be there in the learnity schedule we'll study about vacuoles man just give some time just note this thing down we will study about all these things we are going to study in detail about all these things so this is just a outline okay yeah i don't know the portion man i don't know the portion please don't ask me the portion okay based on whatever i have completed they will assign a paper you please refer learnity for the set schedule whatever is the portion okay basically like i have given them a report as to what i have completed based on that if they are having any paper they will try to take it and then they will give it will be mostly from the portions that i have completed so you please refer the learnity chart schedule part you will be able to tell i will explain what is micro body all these things i am going to see just write it now i am going to explain one by one you will know it at the end of the chapter you will know everything okay so now we will uh, you please go to learn it and then check it children okay i am going to continue with the chapter too many questions on the test part
Okay, so children, now we will try to study about uh, plasma membrane. It is the outermost layer of animal cell. It is found in a layer of plant cells. So if you are talking about animal cell, the animal cell, the plasma membrane will be present as only covering. Whereas in case of plant cell, you have this plasma membrane and covering the plasma membrane is your cell wall. Okay. So it is seen as the inner layer in plant cells. So we are talking about plasma membrane. We are studying about plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is the, it covers the cell. If you are talking about the cell, the cell will include the plasma membrane also. If you are talking about protoplast, the protoplast does not include the plasma membrane. Yes, cell membrane and plasma membrane are the same. Okay, so you have biological membranes. Cell membrane and plasma membrane are the same things. Okay, children, listen here. You have biological membranes. This is divided into two types. One is the plasma membrane. And the second one is the subcellular membranes. The plasma membrane covers the cell. Okay, the substance will cover the cell organelles. Okay, if you are talking about the subcellular membrane, you have all the nuclear membrane. Okay, all your cell organelles membranes. All those things will be coming under subcellular membrane. Whereas plasma membrane is the outermost membrane which is covering the cell. Okay, so this is plasma membrane. Okay, whenever we are using the word cell membrane, we loosely mention cell membrane as plasma membrane. Sometimes some people use cell membrane as a word to indicate biological membranes together. Okay, so it depends on the context. You see where it is used and then like you try to study it accordingly. Okay, there is no hard and fast definition for the word cell membrane. The cell membrane will only indicate plasma membrane. Cell membrane will only indicate subcellular membranes. There is no hard and fast rule that the cell membrane can be uh, used to indicate biological membranes together. 
it can be anything okay cell membrane is just a contextual based usage so wherever it is used depending on that particular occasion you try to read it and then like you try to find it okay so you please understand that these are all the word cell membrane is like a commonly used terminology which can be used to indicate plasma membrane also it can be used to indicate subcellular membranes also and it can be used to indicate biological membranes also okay so that is what i want to clarify so please don't take that uh, hard and uh, don't ask questions i mean like uh, basically plasma membrane and cell membrane can be considered to be same subcellular membranes and cell membrane can be considered to be same biological membranes and cell membranes can be considered to be same okay there is no one uh, single definition for the word cell membrane okay we just use the word membrane that's all we will try to study about these things just hang on for a while you will know it at the end of the class okay what are the functions of the membrane they will control exchange of substances with the environment helps the organelle or cell to function as compartment isolated unit they are selectively permeable they are allow or remove substances in specific directions okay if there is any issue with learnity please ask mr ramesh kumar or your coordinator okay respective coordinators because they would be able to answer it better and if i am going to answer something wrongly and if you are going to take it it's going to be a trouble okay so i don't know exactly what is happening there and what kind of test they are giving so okay harish you are supposed to attend the class now and not view the schedule now okay okay so please understand that these biological membranes are going to help with the 
exchange of substances with the environment. So it can be organ to organelle. So you see here, like I have drawn this diagram, it can be from, this is also a membrane, a biological membrane. This is also a biological membrane. Okay. So either this, we are talking about both these membranes. What is this trying to do? It is trying to push this thing outside and then it can take substances inside. So similarly here also the same thing can happen. So what are these membranes are trying to do? These membranes are trying to uh, exchange, control the exchange of substances with the environment. As far as environment is concerned, if you are going to talk about it, here the substance which is moving in and here, this can be controlled. And similarly here with this particular environment outside the cell, it can be controlling. So there are certain organelles which will require certain parts. There are certain things which are not required by certain organelles. So all that movement is like kind of controlled. Okay. And then like uh, that is the thing. It helps the organelle or cell to function as an isolated unit. What are these biological membranes trying to do? Okay. This here, this entire plasma membrane is allowing this entire cell to function as an individual unit. On the contrary, if you are going to talk about this nuclear membrane, this nuclear membrane is also a membrane. It is allowing this part to function as an individual unit. So what is this trying to do? These membranes are trying to isolate particular regions from the entire group. So here, the nuclear membrane is playing the role of what? It is trying to play the role of isolating the nucleus from the rest of the cell. What is this plasma membrane is trying to do? This plasma membrane is trying to isolate this cell from the other cells. Okay, so that is the thing. They are selectively permeable, which means what is the meaning of selectively permeable? They will not allow everyone inside. They will not allow everyone outside. So it will allow only substances which it wants. Okay, and then you have, they allow or remove substances in specific directions. If they want it, they will take it in. Suppose, let us say that nucleus wants something, so it will try to take it in. Nucleus does not want something, it will try to send it out. It will not send out substances which it wants. Okay, it is allowing only in the specific direction. So say, for example, this membrane will allow only selective substances inside and selective substances outside. That is what we mean by selectively permeable. These are the functions of biological membranes. If you guys are done, please let me know so that I can move on further. What the nucleus want means like it, it needs anything means it will keep it. If it wants glucose, it will try to take glucose. If it wants ATP, it tries to take ATP. If it wants sodium, it will try to take sodium. Nutrients. A specific direction, na north na south na ke karan hai na time hai. It will allow it in the specific direction means inside or outside. That is what I told you. Please listen. It can allow it either inside or it can allow outside.
okay some specific characters of plasma membrane some of these points which i told you might be repeating it is the boundary between between cells and its surroundings okay the second point is it encloses the cytoplasm third it is selectively permeable it has proteins that act as carrier it has receptor sites okay these are all characters of plasma membrane not the functions so a plasma membrane should have act as a boundary between like permeable which means it will allow only selective substances the plasma membrane will have proteins that will act as carriers okay so i will explain what is this word carrier we are going to study about how this is going to be a carrier we will try to study and then it has receptor sites it will have some receiving ends that will help in signaling okay you just take this i will explain you will understand it in a while okay so there are three models of plasma membrane okay so how does this plasma membrane will look like what will be the uh, model in which this plasma membrane will function okay
all membranes will look similar only tambi okay so there are different people who suggested that plasma membrane will look like this abin sorry to they were like the different scientists who were proposing different models what are those three models the first model is what we call it as model which is given by danieli davison model okay so according to this guy the danieli davison model will have will have a phospholipid bilayer which is covered by proteins so according to this model there are three layers what are the three layers in the plasma membrane this one is a protein layer this one is also a protein layer and this one is a phospholipid by layer according to this particular model what did he say he said like the plasma membrane is made up of three layers where a phospholipid bilayer is sandwiched between what and what two layer two layers of proteins okay this is one kind of uh, thing so this is what we call it as danieli davison model okay so this is the first model then the second model is by robertson three models are there the third one is the correct one so the first model is what we are studying the second model is by robertson it's a single word this model is also called as a trilaminar model okay what is the meaning of it this is also three one you are saying that the protein layer is dense and this layer is also dense with a very less dense phospholipid layer so this is also the same thing only 
but what he said was he was saying that the three layers out of the three layers the protein layers are dense and the lipid layer so this is what this guy said robertson was trying to tell that the two protein layers are dense and the lipid layer is light okay so now going on to the third level you have the third model which is the most accepted model we call this as the fluid mosaic model this was proposed by two scientists singer and nicholson okay so singer and nicholson are scientists who proposed this fluid mosaic model okay what is this thing yes singer is a name singer is a scientist name nicholson is a scientist name so these two guys they gave this model which is called as fluid mosaic model okay so someone is asking for slide 6 i'll just show it for a while so moving on further fluid mosaic model please draw this diagram which i am going to draw so you will draw tail like structures like this okay children time and again i am repeating that i am not responsible for deciding the portions for the test so it is very wasteless it is a useless work that you are asking me about the portions the portion is based on what they have in the system and based on whatever i have completed okay so it is like kind of a waste of time discussing to me about the portions because it is based on whatever is available in the system to take online so i will not be uh, deciding the portions so better is you ask the people who are there in learnity so that you will be clear with the test papers and portion so if you are constantly asking also my reply would be the same thing i do not know what is the portion for the test it is dependent on what papers are available in the inter i mean like in their system type the proof check and all those things i can announce end of chapter test as soon as the chapter is over that is what i can do and i can set paper for that thing 
but this need je test is not in my control so whatever number of times you are going to ask me it's going to be the same reply please copy down this diagram i will explain these are also called as integral proteins okay so children listen here this is the diagram which i have drawn of plasma membrane here you need to know certain things what are these certain things that you need to know you please understand that there are certain things which are very very clear here according to this fluid mosaic model why we call it as a fluid mosaic the plasma membrane will look like a fluid okay in which you will have proteins embedded like mosaic that is why we call mosaic okay so if you are going to see it will be like like a semi fluid in which you will see some uh, small uh, stones which are embedded that is what we call it as mosaic like structure so in such a structure these proteins are available okay so there are two different kinds of proteins which you are seeing here okay the lipid layer is a phospholipid layer it is a phospholipid layer i will come to phospholipid layer quickly but there are two kinds of proteins one what we call it as a transmembrane protein it is also called as integral proteins because it's it is integrated with the plasma membrane we call them as integrated proteins 
we call them as a transmembrane protein because this is like a gate so you imagine a uh, plasma membrane is like almost like a compound wall of your school okay it is trying to protect you and you have proteins there and there you have gates in your school for people allowing people to go inside and come outside okay so these gates are the integral proteins so which means plasma membrane has a long covering where you are able to see some small 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 structures which are called as integral proteins or transmembrane proteins what is the role of these proteins these proteins will allow the movement of substances which means substances cannot come here this side directly they have to come only via the carrier substances so these integral membrane proteins are what i mentioned here as carrier it has proteins that act as a carrier what is that protein which is acting as a carrier this is the protein that we are talking about this particular transmembrane protein is a carrier protein which will allow the movement of molecules okay and i also have said here one more thing it has receptor sites that help in signaling what is this receptor site that is helping in signaling this membrane spanning protein so say for example some molecule is coming and attaching here based on that the information will be sent inside you have studied about the neuron whenever you are trying to study about neuron last year in chemical control and coordination you would have studied about uh dendrites dendrite tip dendrite tip will be receiving chemical signals so as soon as the chemical signal is received what will happen this change will shape will the transport will happen stimulus will be transported so this membrane spanning proteins are proteins which will act as the signaling instrument so these are the ones which will receive the chemical signal so say for example there is a bacteria which is there outside the cell and this bacteria is like kind of like releasing some toxic chemicals so the toxic chemicals can can come and attach with the membrane proteins and this membrane protein can send a signal to the nucleus saying that there is a enemy outside the gate so please send someone so then immediately the cell will kind of dispatch messages to wbc and wbc can attack these cells okay like this it is involved in systematic signaling process so even hormones how is that your cells will uh, insulin will start uh, acting on the cells how is that like glucose is converted into glycogen it is because the cells will have receptor site for insulin whenever insulin is present like let us say that there is a protein which is like this and insulin is going to come and attach here this will send some kind of signal inside which will make the cell to produce substances like uh, certain activities it can try to follow up so basically this proteins membrane spanning proteins will act as receptor sites that are helpful in signaling process okay the signaling can be various type of signals can be there it can be a hormone signal okay it can be a system where you are trying to produce antibodies as a response some kind of response or like it is kind of transmitting chemical impulses electrical impulses like this it can be any kind of change which can happen inside the cell but uh, those kind of signaling system is done by this membrane spanning protein so you have two types of proteins transmembrane proteins and membrane spanning proteins the transmembrane proteins are involved in the transport of substances okay and then the membrane spanning protein is something which is involved in the uh, signaling process and then you have this phospholipid layer it is made up of phospholipid so how this will be there you have a phosphate group at the end which is attached to a lipid molecule like a mesial that you have studied in soaps you have studied about soaps no in okay someone is asking me this question sir there are three models what is the exact model of plasma membrane that is what i am explaining to you so the first two models are rejected 
the first two models are rejected the most accepted model is fluid mosaic model okay so now you have studied about measles so while you are studying about measles you would have studied about the hydrophilic head so this phosphate part whenever you are talking about a phosphate lipid this phosphate part is hydrophilic what is the meaning of hydrophilic water attracting this is water attracting so that is why we call it as hydrophilic okay and then this is the water loving end or water attracting end so this part is a lipid layer the lipid layer is hydrophobic what is the meaning of hydrophobic water fearing water fearing tail so what is this thing is allowing so suppose if water molecule is going to come water molecule can come from here 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 and then it can come till this particular point but it cannot move further inside because this part will not allow water to come inside similarly if water molecule has to go from in cell to inside to outside it can go till this particular point but water cannot go in between so which means a cell will not lose water unwantedly so inside the cell water cannot come just like that similarly outside the cell water cannot go outside that so if water has to move it has to move only through the transmembrane protein okay so in case if it wants to water water to come inside or go outside it cannot go inside or outside through what through the layer it can go only by other proteins that is why the transmembrane proteins are there so water soluble substances cannot come inside this way and similarly what is the lipid substances let us say that there is a lipid soluble substance so the lipid soluble substance even cannot come to this end because this this part will not allow the head will not allow the lipid soluble substance to come inside so the head will not even allow the lipid soluble substances to come inside this part will allow lipid soluble substances but the head itself will not allow lipid soluble substances so ultimately the water soluble substances are also kept outside the lipid soluble substances are also prevented by this kind of arrangement okay that is what is the role of this uh, structure okay so thank you very much children the class is over tomorrow we will continue with this fluid mosaic model and then there are certain concepts associated with plasma membrane we'll study about it tomorrow thank you very much Okay, so listen here. Eighth slide, seventh slide. Sixth slide. Fifth slide. Fourth slide. third slide second slide first slide second slide for someone someone is asking second slide someone is asking fourth slide fourth slide
Someone wants to the slide. Someone wants sixth slide. Someone wants eighth slide. Okay, there is a student who is asking me, wait a minute, someone was asking me. Third slide. Kavi Priya, you please see if you are here. Are you here? Kavi Priya, are you here? Okay. I think you should read the textbook properly. The textbook is not saying any such thing. The textbook is saying, however, a closer examination reveals that relative abundance of carbon and hydrogen with respect to other elements is higher in any living organism than in Earth's crust. Okay, that is above that table which is there. Okay, I think you should be like reading it. What does this line mean? However, a closer examination reveals that the relative abundance of carbon and hydrogen with respect to higher other elements is higher in any living organism than in Earth's crust. So it means carbon is more, not oxygen. I don't see any statement in uh, CBSE textbook in biomolecules chapter where it is saying that way. But anyways, I'll try to see it fully, read it fully and then see if there is any such statement. Carbon is the most abundant element which is there in the living organism. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It is the uh, Yalini or right. Whatever you're saying is correct.